You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Dr. Michael Hollick, who is a professor of medicine, physiology, and biophysics. He's the director of the General Clinic Research Unit and the director of the Bone Healthcare Clinic and the director of the Heliotherapy Light and Skin Research Center at Boston University Medical Center. Dr. Hollick has made numerous contributions to the field of biochemistry, physiology, metabolism, and photobiology of vitamin D, for human nutrition. He's the author of the book, The Vitamin D Solution. You can learn a lot more about it at drholick.com, D-R-H-O-L-I-C-K.com. And I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Hollick, for joining us today. My pleasure. Before we get started with the discussions about the benefits of vitamin D, could you just explain, uh, I kind of want to get off the table, why are people so vehemently or some people so vehemently opposed to your work. Could you just tell us what's their opinion? You know, what, how do you respond to them vis-a-vis -vis conflicts of interest and, and that, that you may have or they claim or what, what the battle is all about? Well, I think my major conflict of interest, as I joke uh, in my presentations, is that I get support from the sun. I mean, humans have always depended on sun for their vitamin D requirement, and vitamin D probably has become so important throughout evolution for the health and welfare of humans, that you couldn't depend on it from dietary sources, so sunlight provided it free of charge. So I've been recommending for more than 30 years that people should be aware of the beneficial effect of sunlight. And that's you know, raised a lot of controversy because in this day and age, everybody's been told to avoid all direct sun exposure. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that has put essentially the entire world's population at risk for vitamin D deficiency and its health consequences. I see. So the, the, the pro-umbrella shade suntan lotion people are the ones who are really most against this? Well, the um, tanning industry, of course, uh, realizes that when people go into a tanning bed that has UVB component to it, so these fluorescent lamps that mimic sunlight and they make vitamin D, and we showed in tanners in Boston that they had robust, healthy levels of vitamin D and they had higher bone density compared to healthy adults that didn't use a tanning salon. I see. When, when you're talking about studies, are there any, I mean, I know that when you do medical studies, it's, it's complicated and expensive, but the goal ultimately is to have a prospective, controlled, double-blind survey that would, let's say, show that the long-term use of vitamin D increases life expectancy. Are, are there such studies out there? Well, if you think about it, you know, these are pretty difficult studies to perform. I mean, to think that you're going to convince either a child or an adult to be taking a known quantity of vitamin D for 10, 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. it's just unrealistic. And so almost all the studies have been association studies. That is, that they'll get a blood level some 20 years ago and then follow that individual for 10, 20, 30 years and see what the health, health outcome is. And the results suggest that if you increase your vitamin D intake, that um, your mortality rate uh, is substantially decreased. I mean, we know that from a study here in Framingham Heart that those that were vitamin D deficient had a 50% higher risk of having a heart attack. Those that are vitamin D deficient have an 80% higher risk of having peripheral vascular disease, which is basically atherosclerosis. Um, studies done from our National Health Survey, so this is a population-based study, showed that adults who were vitamin D deficient were more likely to have type 2 diabetes. Wow. So if the use of vitamin D helps as much as this, it would, I've never quite understood this about HMOs, so maybe you'll, you can teach me about how they work, but clearly their interest, I would like to believe, is that their patients their members should be healthy so that they don't, uh, it saves them money in paying for, for the expensive end of life care. Um, why wouldn't they be, let's say, paying or, you know, paying for my vitamin D, whereas they're happy to pay for my statins? 
Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, and even in the United States, we have the same issue with some of my patients because they consider it a vitamin and not a medication. And as I try to point out to the uh, insurers that, you know, increasing a person's vitamin D intake can have substantial impact, beneficial impact on their health, including improving muscle strength, less likely to fall, less likely to fracture for elders who have osteoporosis. Um, improves their feeling of well-being. There's a bone disease known as osteomalacia, which is often misdiagnosed as fibromyalgia. So often young and middle-aged adults complaining of aches and pains in their bones and muscles, especially in the wintertime, they think, well, it's due to age and due to stress. No, it's often due to vitamin D deficiency. And often these aches and pains can resolve if you simply correct their vitamin D deficiency. And so how do the... uh the insurance companies justify they're not uh, either forcing or encouraging people to to take vitamin D? Well, I think that, you know, insurance companies see it as a vitamin, and they just assume that people will either get it from their diet or get it from supplements, and it's easier said than done. I mean, we have evidence that adults need to take at least 1,500 to 2,000 units a day to get to a blood level of vitamin D that we think is important for health. Children should be taking about 1,000 units a day. The Institute of Medicine even recognized just recently that the recommendation they made in 1997 were woefully inadequate and tripled the amount of vitamin D for both children and adults. And they also realized that vitamin D is less toxic than thought, and so they even doubled the upper safe limit. So they now recommend 600 units for children and adults upper limit being 4,000 units. I think that children probably should be taking 1,000 units a day. Adults should be taking two to 3,000 units a day. And the upper limit for adults can be easily 10,000 units a day. Well, we are talking to Dr. Michael Hollick, who is a professor of medicine. He's doing uh, really cutting-edge research at the Boston University Medical Center. He's very, very well known as perhaps the number one man in the world teaching people and encouraging people to to deal with the vitamin D deficiency that they have, and he's the author of the book, The Vitamin D Solution, which you can learn more about at drholic.com. And we're we're just getting a little information about the background of vitamin D, but now, Dr. Holick, as, as you know, this is a really a finance radio show. My, my day job, as they say, is I'm an investment advisor, and I, I only get to talk to interesting people once a week about uh, what they do which isn't to say my clients aren't very interesting, but in your case, tell me, if in 10 years from now the research that you are, are talking about is becomes more broadly accepted in the medical community, what company should we be looking at now as a place to invest in order to you know, maybe make some money on the deal? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I mean, vitamin D is generic, and so I think what you would like is a company that is kind of in the forefront of, uh, promoting um, vitamin D formulations that may, you know, be more bioavailable for both children and adults or easier to take, um, you know, something that, you know, um, puts a spin on it um, that's just different than just going to your local pharmacy to get a multivitamin that contains vitamin D. I see. Are there ways that normal people can tell whether a I mean, there's so many different vitamin Ds. What should we be looking for? Which companies, you know, would we say, oh, this one has a better vitamin D than that one? Well, my recommendation is, and I've been encouraging vitamin companies, that they really need to do some research to show that their product is, in fact, effective or more effective than one of their competitors. Where do they get the vitamin D from? Well, it turns out that um, vitamin D2 comes from yeast. And you can also actually get it from eating uh, sun-dried or sun-exposed or UV-irradiated mushrooms. And then for vitamin D3, which is what's made in your skin, they actually obtain it from lanolin, from sheep's wool, as the precursor, and then chemically modify it and then ultimately expose it to ultraviolet light that then converts it to vitamin D3. I see. So the skin-absorbed vitamin D, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, if, what, what I've heard is that you want to get, uh, let's say, 20 minutes a day of the, the high sun, right? Here in the Middle East, of course, we have a lot of sun, uh, sadly not much rain. Um, if people do that, and the, the, how is it absorbed? How is the vitamin D absorbed sure. in the body? And is it true, this is one of the rumors I've heard, that if you take a shower, you kind of wash off all of the good effects? 
Yeah, good question. So first of all, it's, you actually make vitamin D in your skin, and it's made in the um, living tissue. So, ex so washing immediately after sun exposure will not remove it from your skin. And, um, and once you make that vitamin D in your skin, it then gets into your bloodstream. We know that, yes, if you live in Boston uh, and you're uh, light-skinned, maybe 20 minutes between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. for me would be perfect. But living in Israel, if you know you're going to get a mild sunburn, say after 10 minutes, I would recommend about half that time. So maybe three to five minutes of arms and legs a couple of times a week. So it really depends upon time of day, season of the year, latitude, and the degree of skin pigmentation. Always protect your face. It's only 9% of your body surface, provides you with little vitamin D, and it's the most sun damaged. So I always recommend other body surfaces to be exposed. And I'll give you just an example. We did a study and showed that if you're in a bathing suit and get a light pinkness to your skin 24 hours later, it's equivalent to ingesting about 20,000 units of vitamin D. Well, how do you test that? Pardon? How do, you, how do you know that? How do you see that? Oh, because what we did was we took healthy adults, put them in a tanning bed, and then separately gave them an oral dose of vitamin D at different doses to see how much they raised their blood level. And we could relate the uh, amount of vitamin D in their blood uh, to both the oral dosing and the simulated sun exposure dosing. And so we know that your body has a huge capacity to make vitamin D. And so just going out and exposing your arms and legs or abdomen and back just a couple of times a week, spring, summer, and fall, at least here in Boston, that you're making several thousand units a day. And do you think then that, that uh, eliminates the need to actually take uh, supplements? It does, but it's unrealistic to think that that's the way you're going to get it. If you're a lifeguard, don't need to take a supplement. But you're not going to you know, be always thinking about getting the right amount of sun exposure. So I tell, tell everyone, because I cycle sunscreen on my face, not on my arms and legs in the spring, summer, and fall, and I also take 3,000 units of vitamin D a day from supplement my dietary sources. And my blood level is at around 50 nanograms per ml, which is about 125 nanomoles per liter. And that's what we think to be perfect. And as opposed to some of the people who are extremely excited about vitamin D and take 50,000 units a day, is that that's a little bit beyond the uh, pale? Yes, it is. Uh, we know that you could probably take up to 10,000 units a day, but I don't recommend that. But if you're obese, you need at least two, up to five times more vitamin D to satisfy your requirement because your body fat basically sucks it up and dilutes it out, and so it's not available to your body. Oh, amazing. Okay, this has really been amazing. Dr. Michael Hollick, I, I want to thank you very much for your time. Dr. Michael Hollick is the uh, professor of medicine, physiology, and biophysics. He's the director of the General Clinical Research Unit and the director of the Bone Health Care Clinic and the director of the Helio Heliotherapy Light and Skin Research Center at Boston University. He is very, very well known for all of his speaking all over the Internet as well as uh, in medical conferences around the world about the positive effects of vitamin D, and he's the author of the book, The Vitamin D Solution, and, uh, I, and you can learn more at drholic.com. I'd like to thank you very, very much for your time. It's been fascinating. I hope we'll get to speak to you again soon. That would be wonderful, and I hope that you and your listeners will have a delightful day. Okay, thanks. You've been listening to The Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.